how to what to discuss. I'm hearing feedback. Uh, at the conference this week, uh, this year, I tried to think, well, what have we not talked about? What have I not heard a presentation about in, in a good while? And with a fascination I had developed over the last year with old laptops, uh, I thought of the Omnibooks. And I talked to Richard, and he said, well, sure, because the Omnibooks were developed in Corvallis, so they're just as much a semi-handheld product as anything else that came out of Corvallis. <laughs> You do want, perhaps, to write down that tiny URL link that is not in any of the documentation. There will be a second one later on. That's to a zip file that has some documentation for the Omnibooks, some introductory flyers, and things like that. It's tinyurl.com slash m5jpz6p. I'll leave it up there for another minute. Uh, that'll just download a zip file. It's coming from me. I promise it has no malware, so you don't have to worry about it. But uh, that's a compressed PDF, so I think you'll find that to be some additional helpful information. I do have uh, three Omnibooks here with me today. Uh, I have the original Granddaddy, uh, another one that I wanted, and then one of Richard's he's giving to me to keep for... Yeah, okay. that, that I want to get rid of it. He wants to get rid of it because it's busted. Uh, and so I'll, I'll take that. Does everybody have that URL down that wants it? Okay. So Corvallis made many things. And there are, is at least one error on this slide, so I want to see if you find it. Corvallis made many things. Corvallis fell in. Actually, it corrected to that, so I hope that's correct. Um, all right, any error in that picture? Close enough, right? No, not, one of those is not the 15C plus or LE, so I'm not trying to trick you on that. But they made those. They made calculators. That's what we're here for. They made that. All right, the 75. No. Yeah, he, he was on it. We'll hear about that tomorrow. Uh, and then the little guy right here, right? That is the 95. No. That's right. That's the mistake. That's after it had already gone where? Singapore? Something like that. And then the follow up, which was perhaps even worse, uh, the Omnigo. Where was that done? Singapore. Singapore, right? That's the one I never could get the screen where I could read it. These days, the screens are fine. It's the color legends on the keys that I can't read. <laughs> but uh, no, that, that was a mistake. The, uh, the 660, 620 stuff right here is not a Corvallis product. But they made a lot of things beyond calculators. And they killed calculators as a result of it. Yeah, eventually it morphed away. But look, the goal of my talk is to expand your collecting horizons. I want you all to leave with a goal that I have to have one of those. And one of those are one of the HP Omni books up here at the top. So they also made a line of PC sub notebooks. They called these the Omni books. Now if you look, you can see some parental descent because you've got the top of two 95 LXs, I think. One of them may be and one of them may be the 1000 CX uh, LX over there, but, or CX. But you can see, right, the ridges on the top, and the one on, uh, above it at the very top is a Omnibook. That is the Omnibook 300. So it came with the same design. It's just kind of a, a, one of the 95 LXs, 100 LXs, and so on on steroids. So the original design, like I say, is on steroids. So let's talk about them. There are a lot of Omnibooks. <laughs> Wikipedia lists 26 models which ones are worth being interested in? Let's prune the list, okay? I would suggest, first of all, narrowing your list to just those that have three-digit model numbers. XE3 does not count as a digit model number. So you can ignore anything that's four digits right off the bat. Don't even bother looking at it on eBay. You don't really want it. Why? Because it is simply a PC after probably, uh, you know, as they were headed toward compact merger and all that kind of stuff. It's just a PC. Might as well look at a HP laptop, a Dell, whatever it may be. All right, so there's nothing Corvallis about it, just using the name. So, which ones to exclude? The, the three-digit Omnibooks also have a couple that should be excluded. If you throw away all the ones that are four-digit and only look at the three, you still got to be a little careful because there's a couple of sneaky three-digit ones that HP tried to sneak in under the radar and get people to go by thinking they were like the early ones. 
The three digit Omni books to ignore, in my opinion, which it doesn't say, because they are really just laptops with no real Corvallis lineage, are two of them here the Omni book 500 and 510. Don't bother. Okay, the numbers fall right in the middle of the range of the Omnibook numbers you do want to consider trying to get. So you're going to be tricky. You want to make sure you don't bother with the 500 and 510. They have Pentium 3 processors. Okay, so they're pretty late on the scene. The Omnibook 900 is also one to ignore. It, from a model number standpoint, it would seem to be perhaps the last great Omnibook that was produced in the line to be uh, aware of, but it's just a small 12-inch laptop. I found that out when I bought one off eBay, uh, not having done my homework first. So learn from my mistakes. You can get one of these if you want, but you might as well just get one because it's a laptop because that's all it is. That's what the 500 and 510 look like. Back in the days when a laptop was going to be your media home entertainment center, <laughs> with the dock, with the speakers, and the controls to advance your CDs without having to open the lid, things like that. That's not any in any way connected at all with Corvallis. Get one if you want, but It was a great laptop. If you want a regular laptop, but we're talking collecting here. We're not talking usability. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the one on the other side is the Omnibook 900. It's a nice little tiny 12-inch uh, sub notebook uh, without uh, you know some of the extra features. But again, it's just a notebook. So the 500, the 510, and the 900, take those out of your eBay search terms. So again, if you're going to focus on those that have three-digit model numbers, which one should you start focusing on? You're skipping the 500, the 510, and the 900. Which one? The first one you have to probably try to hunt for is a hard one to find. The Omnibook 300. That is a picture of it right there. It was introduced uh, early June of 93. It came with a 20 megahertz 386 SXLV. The SX meant Somebody had gone in with something and killed off the math coprocessor piece of it, as I recall. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, 16 bit. Well, 16 -bit. I, the LV is low voltage. The this SX is 16 bit, not full 32. So it's a fairly low powered machine. It has a 9 inch non backlit display that is VGA, 640 by 480, and it does have 16 shades of gray. That is this Omnibook right here. And I would love for everybody to get a chance to take a look at it. The screen is immensely readable. It, it is incredible how readable the screen is. It came with a rechargeable battery that gave you five hours of battery life, which was incredible for the day uh, hard, for yeah. the hard disk model, and nine if you didn't have a hard drive in it. It could run off of PCMCIA flashcards, uh, which could uh, be recharged in a pinch. You could use four double A's, which is what it's running off of right now. You know, try that with uh, any laptop today. Watch it eat the battery and How smoke. long does it run on double A? Mm, yeah, it depends on what you're doing with it. If you got the flash model, it's going to be a whole lot longer than spinning a hard drive. Uh, it came standard with a whopping two megabytes of RAM, a nine-pin serial port, and a parallel port. Uh, it had two PCMCIA slots where you could add something that they had left out, whether it's a flash memory or you know a modem card or whatever it may be. It came in three mass storage configurations. This is where I really ran into a lot of trouble. I don't think I have all the correct introductory dates for these models. The model numbers were a royal pain to track down as well. Richard really would want the model numbers to document everything. But I mean, look at that. One of them was no mass storage at all for 1500 bucks. A 10 meg flash disk for 2300 or a 40 meg hard disk for less $2,000. <laughs> it came with Windows 3.1 and Microsoft Office in ROM. Hmm. In ROM. So you can run your Excel and type your Word stuff without ever having to have any storage. Go straight into it. What interesting features does it have? Instant on. You push the on button, it's there. It's just like a calculator in that regard, just like the 95LX, the 100, or the 200. It has a very unique pop-out mouse. You can see that over here on this side right here. Right there. You push a button on the front of the unit up near the top and the mouse will pop out if it's not broken the way this one is and it allows you to use a mouse with no 
needed flat surface underneath it. This can hang mm -hmm. out into space and you can drive your computer out in the middle of nowhere. What, what if you're left handed? It is very unfriendly to left-handed people, as I say on my next yeah, point right there. Right? He's a mind reader. Uh, it also, though, did have the HP Calculator Windows application program. Uh, and at three pounds, this really was way ahead of its time, just under three pounds. That's an incredible machine. An RPN calculator? Well, let's take a look at it. Here's a zoomed-in picture of the screen. You can see it's got Microsoft Word. You can see Excel, uh, Excel is not showing that. No, just one, two, three. Yeah, Lotus. Lotus. Yeah. No, it, it had Excel in Office. I don't know where it is on this icon, but that's not why I wanted to show. I wanted you to see the HP Financial Calculator icon right here. And it's got the little 12C beneath it, right? That's what it looks like when you run it. Uh, that is was running on my uh, uh, MacBook Air earlier this afternoon, so it still runs under Windows. It is the financial calculator that's built into the 100 and 200 LX. So it has HP Solve built into it. If you want to use HP Solve for some reason on a laptop today, you can go to this URL right there and download it as a zip out of my Dropbox. That is a believe it or not, a one in front of the nine right there, if you want to write that down. I tried it both ways. I don't know how that works, but a one and an L both brought the file down. Hmm. But tinyurl.com slash 4k19v5u will download a very small zip file containing that application that runs fine, at least in Windows XP, hmm. which is what I still use. 32-bit XP. What? Are these slides on the thumb drive? The slides are on the thumb drives, but the URLs are not because I just added them at about 5 o'clock. I thought, oh, I bet they're going to want that. I wish I'd thought of that yesterday. I'm not about to redo all the thumb drives yet again, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but this is, I thought this was really cool. You can put in your own formula and type it in with text in an equation solver and then have your own little keys that you can do with the function key. So that was built into the Omnibook 300. There is a zoomed in picture of the uh, keyboard. If you notice, the function keys are mapped to different Office programs or other programs. Pushing F1 uh, with the function prefix down here in the bottom left corner would start uh, a Word, F2, Excel, and so on. And you can see again the little button that has the tiny little mouse on now, it over on the top. Well, the really important thing is that they build in solitaire. Did they build in solitaire? <laughs> that thing that's wasted more corporate time than any program known to man. the most used application in those spreadsheets. For, for Windows 3.1. I will not admit how much time I ever spent playing solitaire. <laughs> you can see this one hooked up with a floppy drive uh, right next to it. Okay, so that's the Omnibook 300. I, that's going to be very tough to find. I was the second highest bidder on at least three before I finally went nuts and decided to get one. So I don't know who the other bidders were, but there's not many 300s out there. The what Omnibook... Price, what price did you have to pay? $70. I'm cheap. That seemed like a lot to me. Okay, but the next revision was the Omnibook 425. This was introduced, best I can tell, a mere five months later. I don't know why you would bother doing that five months later, but they did on November 8th. It upgraded the processor to a 25 megahertz 486 SLC slash E and added a third PCMCIE slot. Everything else is the same. That's what it looks like. The little uh, symbol over there on the right by the uh, Omnibook is where I got most of these pictures from. It's a very good source. It's the Australian Computer Museum. Uh, I highly recommend that. On a, uh, a boarded trip where I was going to be in Melbourne, I actually had worked up where I was going to go visit, spend Saturday afternoon with the guy that runs this place who was going to show me the shed on the back of his property, but uh, never got there. So that was the 425. The 430 three months after the 425. What was HP thinking? The processor stayed the same on the Omnibook 430 at 25 megahertz 486 SLC slash E. The changes, however, included bumping the RAM up to four megabytes from two and added IRDA. The mass storage option on the 430 was a 105 megabyte drive. What will we do with that space? <laughs> Everything else was the same. So the 425, the 430, and the 300 are more or less exactly the same. Same screen, none of them are backlit, slightly different processors, uh, same mouse, I mean everything's really the same. If you have one of them, 
you've got really what you need unless you're uh, you know, going nuts. So there's a picture of the 430. So as I say here, if you get one of them, you really should fill your collecting need unless you're an obsessive or compulsive collector. Well, that's really nearly all of us. So that's the first suggestion I would make. HP then introduced three other Omnibooks for your consideration. As we go down this list, they get more and more like regular laptops. Okay, I'm fully aware of that. At some point, they morph into those, the, the 900 Omnibook and things like that, right? The Omnibook 530, that's what this broken one is with the broken screen right here. Three months after the 430. The Omnibook 530 was introduced. The processor was upgraded to a 33 megahertz 486SX. That's the one, I guess, where the math chip failed and they disabled it, right? This time, they added a VGA out port on the 530. It ran Windows 3.11. Yes, Windows for work groups, if you ever used that. Oh, yeah. yeah. The mass storage option was 130 megabyte drive. Everything else is the same. It, the 486SX did boost the speeds two to three times over the Omnibook 430. Uh, and that's because I say, even though the 486 SLC-E was a very slow 486, it really wasn't a 486 at all, because in fact, it was a marketing lie. The 486 SLC was actually a 386 chip with slightly more cash on board. And that extra cash made them decide to marketize it by putting it as a 486 chip. But any cash at all, it was more than a 386. Uh, but, you know, marketing people, right? Yeah. Sorry and apologies to any marketing people in the building. Uh, oh, wait, wait, this is Saturday and it's yeah. evening. <laughs> okay, there you can see a picture of the 530, okay, with the, uh, the um, windows in inverse video. The Omnibook 600. This came four months later and we finally started seeing some real changes to the Omnibook line. Uh, and again, real changes here continue to mean much more like a normal laptop, right? I have an Omnibook 600 running right here. And if you can see that, you can see that it is a color screen for the first time. And it is a backlit screen. There were two models, the 600C and the 600CT. And uh, for Velotic, I spelled color the British way. <laughs> Couleur or something. Uh, the 600C used an 8.5 inch passive matrix color screen. And the CT used a 9.5 inch active color screen. The CT is a much better looking screen. If you don't remember Passive Matrix, they stink. They were both running, again, 640 by 480. RAM was now 8 meg standard instead of 2 on the 300 Omnibook, and you could go all the way up to 32 megabytes. The processor in these babies was a 75 megahertz 46 DX4. Do you remember those guys? Yeah. Or they were running triple the clock speed or something else, right, or something like that, four times. Uh, the CT had a four, 75 megahertz, and the C had a 50. They both were running, again, Windows 3.11. Strangely, they, they had what they called SVGA out, but it was actually XGA resolution. The marketing materials all say SVGA, which I usually think is 800 by 600. Yeah. That's because but at the time, monitors couldn't do, uh, projectors couldn't do XGA. I, I suppose, right? They're, they're caught in the time warp, where the specs don't match what it is. It had a floppy port, docking port, two speakers, and a microphone. Mass storage was a 340 meg hard drive. Still had a pop-out mouse. Still had a pop-out mouse. The weight increased by nearly a pound to just under four pounds. And there's a picture of a 600C. That's a passive screen running the Windows appointment notebook. You can see the little mouse again out there to the side. Here's a zoomed in picture of the screen. Again, looking at the HP Financial Calculator app, which I had the link for earlier. There's a picture of the back of the ports. You've got the IRDA printer, a docking port which gave you more, that's on the far right, uh, VGA and the, and the uh, video out and the floppy port. There's the keyboard. Do you notice some of the keyboard shortcuts up on the function keys are gone? That's because window, uh, the office apps are no longer in ROM and so it's, who knows if it's there or not. So you've got all these nice function keys up there where you can write your own things on it but uh, wor uh, Word and Excel are not there. Omnibook 800, two years later they finally wised up. Two years later, the last good, again, my opinion, Omnibook was introduced, the Omnibook 800. The 800C and the 800CT brought a Pentium processor 
in either 100, 133, or 166 megahertz and a 10.4 inch 800 by 600 display. Those still command a reasonable price on eBay. Uh, usually around $150 for an 800 uh, CT. The 800C, like the 600C, uses the passive screen. The CT is the active screen. RAM was 16 meg standard. You could go all the way up to 80, 80 meg. The graphics processor, I had to throw in some little geeky stuff here, was a PCI Neo Magic Magic Graph 128XD NM2160. Who on earth would ever know what that means again? Right? I don't know that anybody knew at the time, but it supposedly could draw, you know, run the external monitor so you could play Space Invaders or Solitaire right? on the external monitor this time. Again, as I say, that means nothing to me. Uh, an additional port was a somewhat proprietary SCSI 2 connection for hooking up an external CD drive where you could install your programs off the CD. If you don't have the connector that it came with, good luck finding uh, an extra cable that works for that. Mass storage really has started bumping up to a seven, uh, 800 meg, 1.3 gig, or a 2 gig hard drive. It came running either Windows 3.1 or Windows 95. The 600C that's running up here is running Windows 95, and it's got Office 95, and it seems to run pretty well. This one's not too bad. However, the first time I quit Windows 95, be careful of old stuff, it scrambled most of the files on the drive, and they all, uh, when I ran check disk, remember that? Changed them into file 0001.chk. So a tree got messed up, so I had to reinstall it all. So if it happens again, it's, it's going to eBay. <laughs> a special deal. It could also run Windows NT and all the HP tools necessary to compile and work and program the HP 49G. Because you know this. Because it might happen that as soon as I was traveling, I was using one of those as I was working on the 49G. So Windows NT is another possibility for it. Um, All about OS two. Don't think so. I don't know. But there's there's the you can see now. Look, bigger screen, right? You can tell it's taking up more of the thing. Uh, and it's a very beautiful display compared to some of the others. The 600C is not that bad. The 800CT is a very nice looking machine. There it is with the CD drive over to the side and the floppy, again from the Australian Computer Museum. This is a file that's also on your thumb drive. It is my attempt to finally accumulate all of the specs that I could for it. I would love to have additions if you ever track anything down. The uh, introduction date, the processor, the speed, the RAM, the screen, all that kind of stuff, right? because I couldn't find it anywhere. I had to scrape it up from all sorts of different documents. So that's on your uh, list. So I certainly recommend getting one of these uh, Omnibooks. I've got the 600 CT and a 300. Interestingly to me, they can be taught a few new tricks. Um, Bill Hemphill from New Jersey, he's on the museum, I believe. I don't think it's Bill Smith. Bill, if you watch this and you're Bill Smith, I'm sorry. Um, he's an Omnibook enthusiast and when he uh, heard I was going to do this he sent me some things to do new tricks on it. The Omnibook 300 can boot and, ru and uh, run CPM as its operating system. Uh, if you've never seen CPM that was the operating system from digital research before Microsoft stole the rug out from under IBM. It is not. This is on a uh, compact flash card on a PC MCIA card adapter booting off of the card. But it will run. The Omnibook 300 will run CPM. Whoa. CPM or CPM 86? CPM, I think. I don't know for sure. No, it has to be 86. Cause if it's CPM running an 8088 80, kind of machine. CPM was Z80. Well, well okay. They put the 8088 All right. Very yeah, possibly 80, 80, 80. it's running one for the Intel chipset. That's how little I have ever done CPM in the last 20 years. Thank you. I appreciate that. The 800 can boot and run a version of Linux. Uh, off of a small micro drive Bill sent me as well. I say will be shown, I have yet to get them to boot, uh, but that's again my ineptitude more than anything. I've got the flashcards and the machines, you're welcome to help me and see what you can do. So, other than how can I find one of these on eBay and use my money wisely, anybody have any questions at all about the Omnibook line? You can't do both of those two things, you can do one or the other. <laughs> Spend your money wisely or whatever. Surreal. Uh, another trick they had was that if the battery was running flat on the computer, you could actually close the screen, so you, you know, on the 800, so it wouldn't, you know, power the screen, turn it over, 
get ready with your spare battery. Pop out the battery, put the new one in, reopen your screen, and keep working. And Windows would not have, you know, the RAM was still there, the CPU kept running, and you kept working. That was also a good trick on a trans, you know, on a trans-Pacific flight from, <laughs> let's say, you know, Melbourne to somewhere in the U.S. When you had three or four batteries with you, you could work, you know, nearly ten hours in the flight doing that. Long before you could do it any other way for that kind of time. And again, I think that probably is carried on from some of its calculator heritage, right? Uh, but by the time you get to the 800, you really are only a half step away from just a regular laptop. Yes, sir. Good. Were you able to connect the uh, 300 to a network? Uh, I have not. Uh, I don't know how you network a Windows 3.1 machine uh, to any, any, any sort of to a token ring adapter or something. No, no, no. no. Uh, I have a couple to of Ethernet? PC card uh, network adapters. Yeah. Yeah. Run a, run a text-based uh, uh, no, uh, no, browser. Yeah. No, 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 so you could connect to the company network. Boy, that would that would have to be awfully painful. With two mega RAM, running everything else. Any other questions? Yes, Eddie. Uh, the 600 and 800 could they run on batteries, or they had to be? They, they can run on batteries. The 600 right now is solely AC power because the battery pack's dead, and the new one will cost as much as the 600 did. Wow. Does but, he mean alkaline batteries? Yeah. The 600 cannot be on alkaline. Okay. All right, it's a rechargeable pack or AC. The 300 runs just fine on the uh, regular double uh, A's. Were you implying that you can buy a new battery for it? I have seen things on eBay. People will refurbish anything. Well, okay, yeah. No. No. Rebuild the cells? All right, well, I'm going to pass around the 500, the 530, so you can get a feel for it. The other ones, you're more than welcome to play with whenever you might want. Those are our Omnibooks. Richard, thank you very much.